Chapter 18 The teachers, Waller, and the students were all on their best behavior. Though it was difficult for many, and every now and then, someone slipped up majorly. Like Vice Principal Grodd, who carelessly tossed a banana peel on the floor, causing Star Sapphire's mother to teeter off her high heels and slip. Luckily, Hawk Girl was there to fly in and catch her. Then, instead of apologizing, Grodd just wiped his massive brow with his red handkerchief, grunted, and stomped away, knuckles dragging on the ground. It wasn't just Grodd who messed up. In her enthusiasm, Wonder Woman almost bruised several parents' hands when she shook them. Luckily, Poison Ivy was standing by to whisper, easy, go easy, whenever the slightest hint of a grimace was evident. Miss Martian was so overwhelmed by the crowd, she kept turning invisible when anyone spoke to her. And so did her sponsor, the Martian Manhunter himself. And when Beast Boy slipped a whoopee cushion onto Commissioner Gordon's chair, Cyborg laughed so hard he nearly popped a screw loose. Supergirl stood alone in the far corner of the gym, watching her peers. Some tried to act cool around their parents. Others, like Bumblebee, wouldn't stop hugging theirs. Supergirl touched her crystal necklace. She recalled her first day of kindergarten on Krypton, when she wouldn't let go of her mother's legs. Kara, sweetheart, her mother spoke gently but firmly. It's time for me to go. Everything will be okay. Always do your best, Kara, and you'll be fine. I promise. Every year after that, on the first day of school, Supergirl's mother would say the same thing. Everything will be okay. Always do your best, Kara, and you'll be fine. I promise. Every year but this one. Beast Boy and his mentor from the Doom Patrol, the Chief, shared the same spirited sense of humor and were constantly laughing. Abuela Munoz, video chatting into parents' night, looked like an older, elegant version of Hawk Girl. And then there was Wonder Woman's mother, Queen Hippolyta, ruler of Paradise Island. Even the other parents, most of whom were superheroes themselves, seemed thrilled to bask in the presence of the Amazon Queen, who was as strong as she was beautiful. Supergirl could see where Wonder Woman got her self-assurance, power, and grace. And she couldn't help laughing when her normally serious flight teacher, Red Tornado, raced over to Hippolyta and began babbling and, to everyone's embarrassment, knelt before her. Supergirl, someone yelled. Yoo-hoo, another voice called out. It was Uncle Jonathan and Aunt Martha. They had told Supergirl they were coming to parents' night. Still, she was surprised to see them. At first, Supergirl thought the Kents looked out of place, as the two Midwestern farmers mingled with some of the greatest superheroes in history. Supergirl watched Wonder Woman proudly introduce her mother to everyone. Katana was trying to explain her wild friend, Beast Boy, to her mortal relatives, who had journeyed all the way from Tokyo. It didn't help that he kept changing his form, showing off. As the Kents waved, Supergirl approached them. It would be up to her to make them feel at ease. After all, she knew firsthand how overwhelming this place could be to outsiders. But Supergirl wasn't prepared for what happened next. Before she made her way across the room, others beat her to them. Everyone already seemed to know Aunt Martha and Uncle Jonathan. They were greeted warmly by students, parents, teachers, and staff. How is Superman doing these days? Harley's father asked as he extended his hand. When Uncle Jonathan shook it and got a small shock from the joy buzzer in his palm, both laughed. He's excelling in college, Uncle Jonathan said. He's so busy with semester in space that we don't know when we'll see him next, Aunt Martha chimed in. That was when Supergirl remembered that her cousin had attended Superhero High just a few years before her. Many of the guests already knew the Kents. Instead of mocking her plain-spoken, non-superhero aunt and uncle, everyone adored them. I'm glad you could be here, Supergirl said, relaxing and finally starting to enjoy the evening. We wouldn't have missed it, Aunt Martha replied. Yes, Uncle Jonathan added. 
We're huge fans of Superhero High. Look at all you kids. You hold the promise of a better world. The supers who had gathered around beamed. Please, Aunt Martha said to Hawk Girl and the others, you're all invited to the Kent farm for Thanksgiving in a couple of weeks. Someone tapped her on her shoulder. Supergirl, Liberty Bell said. Have you shown your aunt and uncle your family history project? For a brief moment, Supergirl's heart fell. Slowly, she walked the Kents over to the displays on the far side of the gym. Trifold foam core boards stood up on tables, each with a family tree and an illustrated history. Katanas had roots in ancient Japan, hawk girls in Venezuela, and bumblebees in Brooklyn, New York. When they finally got to the last one, everyone stopped and stared. Supergirl had done a drawing of the planet Krypton, in addition to her family tree. At the top was a photo of the hologram Barbara had created for her. And above that was a photo of Supergirl with the caption, The Last Leaf on the Tree. A poem accompanied the family tree. It read in part, Krypton was my planet. Krypton was my home. Something happened. Something terrible and sad. Krypton was my planet. Krypton was my home. It is gone now. My planet, my family, my home. Aunt Martha dried her tears and moved to hug Supergirl. It's just a poem, Supergirl said dismissively, stepping away from her. It doesn't mean anything. Supergirl was glad she wasn't tangled up in Wonder Woman's lasso of truth. Your parents would be proud, Uncle Jonathan said. For the first time, Supergirl noticed the wrinkles etched in his brow. Before the tears began to fall, Supergirl lowered her head. She could feel the Kent's warm embrace, yet she couldn't bring herself to hug them back. They weren't her parents. They weren't even her real aunt and uncle. They'd adopted her because her parents had died. They could never replace her mother and father. No one could. It was a relief when Supergirl heard Waller announce, Will everyone please move to the auditorium so we can start our formal part of Parents' Night? I'll be right there. Supergirl told the Kents, there's something I have to do first. As everyone filtered out, Kara stared at her family tree with her parents' portrait on top. They look like you. Supergirl was surprised to find Liberty Bell standing behind her. Missing them? Liberty asked. Supergirl nodded. Her throat choked up and her stomach in knots. I know it must be hard, her teacher said. There was kindness in her voice, not sympathy. Here at Superhero High, so many have lost loved ones. That's one reason we do family trees, to remember and honor those we have lost, and to inspire us all to move forward. Supergirl remained silent, afraid that if she spoke, she might lose it. You're doing really well, Supergirl, Liberty Bell assured her. Superhero High is here for you. Before she left, Liberty Bell turned around. Oh, I almost forgot. Granny Goodness asked me to give these to you. What a sweet little old lady she is. She slipped a napkin full of cookies into Supergirl's hand. I hope you don't mind I had one, Liberty Bell said. I just can't resist those cookies. No one can. Faster than a speeding bullet, Thanksgiving week appeared. There was general cheer around Superhero High, midterms having just ended so everyone could enjoy the holiday. Supergirl was doing better in her classes and had managed to bring up her grade in superheroes throughout history thanks to her family tree project. She was doing well in intro to supersuits, partly due to the extra credit Crazy Quilt had bestowed. Though teachers weren't supposed to play favorites, Every time Crazy Quilt saw Supergirl, he would declare in a loud stage whisper, Perfect! Perfecto! Perfection! Your costume, strength, vulnerability, hope, courage, colors. Then he would strike a pose like the Statue of Liberty or Rodin's The Thinker. It embarrassed Supergirl to have such attention lavished on her. On Krypton, she was just a regular girl. 
I don't know what to say when people compliment me like that, she confessed to Barbara. Barbara looked up from the tiny homing device prototype she was building for Mr. Fox. If she was successful, he wanted every student to have one. Why don't you say thank you, she suggested. Supergirl looked at her friend with admiration. Why hadn't she thought of that? Most of the supers were headed home for Thanksgiving, but not all. Please, Supergirl told them. My aunt and uncle say there's plenty to eat and it would make them happy if you joined us. She was working on telling people how she actually felt. It would make me happy too, she added.